Welcome to Keep On Casting. We're here at Covey Rise Plantation doing a little quail hunt with the boys. We've got Steve Wanko, Brock Wanko, Trey Wanko. We're out here having a good time. Shoot some nice quail. Keep On Casting is brought to you by Thibodeau Regional Medical Center. Bronco Industries, leading the field in industrial construction and fabrication. Real Outfitters, proud to be the first family-owned tackle store in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Creating Covey Rise was something just following a passion. It, uh, I used to go with my grandfather. Uh, he had bird dogs and, and, and do that as a family affair between my dad, my grandfather, and myself going to hunt some quail. And it's something that when I got into college, I started doing with my dad and my grandfather and continued to do it and, and bought a bird dog and it just led to, to one step to the next. It was a one man operation and then it's turned into what it is now. So it's just following some passion and something we enjoy doing. When we started Covered Rise, we realized this was a great location. Less than an hour from New Orleans and an hour from Baton Rouge, it gives people an opportunity to come out for the day and do anything from the clays to the hunting and still get back home. This year is our 20th year in business. We started originally just quail hunting and we were allowed by the state to add more birds, so now we do uh, chucker partridge and also uh, pheasant hunts. And those can be done continental tower shoot on the pheasant, or in the field we can do mixed bag hunts, which has a little bit of everything, you know, the quail, the chucker, and, and the pheasant. Originally we built a sporting clays, and then uh, soon after that in the National Sporting Clays Organization, they came out with a game called the five stand, which is a simple version of the sporting clays. It gives you a left to right, a right to left target, an incomer, a going away, a rabbit, and it's a game, but it also can be a great practice area. One thing we've added recently is uh, skeet and trap field. And we did that because we do a lot of 4-H shooters. And that gives them all the disciplines needed to compete in the state championship and things like that. For anybody new to shooting or hunting, um, we have one or two instructors that we can line up and introduce the safety aspect and introduce them into the clay shooting where once they're comfortable, then we can also introduce them to some hunting. Because of the summertime, we don't hunt. Then we decided to start other avenues um, of business and like our summer youth camp for kids that is set up with the Louisiana Wildlife and Fishery so we can do the hunter education program during the camp. It's a five day camp that they stay here on property and by the time they leave, um, they get their hunter education. On the main property, we have the main lodge, uh, which has uh, sleeping quarters, six bedrooms, and that is our dining facility. But we also decided to build some cabins on a lake. Those are actually individually owned by customers, but they are, several of them in our rental pool system, where you can, if you want to come up with a small group, three or four or five, or family, you can come up and rent those cabins like you would a condo and stay on property, uh, line up your quail hunt or line up your clay shooting, or just relax and uh, sit by the lake. If you stay in a cabin, there's also a 14 acre lake that uh, we manage for bass and brim that you're welcome to use. First thing we'll do is I'm gonna put Pepper, she's a female Brittany, about 25 pounds of hurricane. She's gonna cover the cover hunt hard, when she goes on point, then it's our job then to walk in up 
find her, we might get to see her on point. We may have to go look for her. When we come up on everybody that's doing the shooting, make sure that you are guns up, barrels up, on safety, away from me and away from other shooters. I'm gonna be in the middle. I'm gonna have a shooter on my right. I'm gonna have a shooter on my left, okay? At the same time, we're gonna have a little English Cocker Spaniel that's gonna walk along with us on the hunt. The primary job of that Spaniel is to get birds up in the air. When the birds start flying, you gotta make sure that your target that you're getting ready to shoot is in a safe place. And when I say safe place, I'm usually meaning at least shoulder high and up on an adult, okay? No shooting behind us, okay? We got way too many people behind us. If a bird starts to go behind you, you're just gonna have to leave it alone. We're gonna have a shoot on the right, shoot on the left. You're basically gonna be wanting to take everything out front and around to what I would say is nine o'clock on a watch dial. On the right, about 12 o'clock out to about three o'clock on a watch dial. Just don't want any shooting going on behind you. Up towards those big trees up there. Up up, up up. Well, this particular unit, I can actually control two dogs. Green, I usually just use for the pointing dog. This way! And then orange is on tie. So I've got the ability um, to, I can hit them with tone, just so they get their attention. Um, if I need to get a mild correction, just as a, you know, hey, a little reminder, when I say here, I need you to come to me then I'm able to do that and I can switch in between the two dogs. Here he comes, whoop, whoop, good job, good job. No bird pee, no! Get ready, get him up, Ty. Nope. Birds flew low, no bird! Back this way! Look at that, birds outsmarted all of us on that one. She is bred to point. This way! That is what she is bred to do. Hunt, find birds, and point. And then he is bred to, to flush and to retrieve. When they go on point, stay there. Right, let's move up, the birds are running. Keep walking. Get them up. Get them out of there, side dog. Come on, buddy. So we're walking out here, walking behind the dog, keeping up with Eric. Steve and I are shooting at first, just so the young'uns can figure out what to do. Got a pheasant, first shot, then just got that quail. Awesome hunting out here. Get to see what uh, quail hunting was really like in a day. Hope it'll come back. Go ahead, buddy. Get him up. Here we go, dog. No bird! That's a big no bird! One. Damn, damn, good shot. Mr. Bob, boy. Wow. Good job, man. Good. Yeah. All right. Nice, pretty chucker. Not on for the pot. Get ready, mama. Coming on. Tell you what, that's good eating. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> The main thing for taking care of your dogs is, especially in Louisiana, is making sure there's enough, there's plenty of water around. And I don't mean water bottles, I'm talking about water that they can get their feet in, their stomach, um, so that they can get in and, and get nice and wet. These dogs work up a lot. So we have ponds, um, we have water barrels out here, and even, even mud puddles can really go a long way to keeping them keeping them hydrated and cool. Other than that, you know, watch your dogs. If you start to see one, it looks like he's kind of wobbly a little bit. You want to stop that immediately and get that dog to the shade. Um, and always 
I always recommend that you keep a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol on your trailer. If a dog starts to overheat, first thing you want to do is not splash cold water on them. First thing you want to do is calm them down, get them in shade, rub a little rubbing alcohol on their belly. Not cold water. Cold water can put them in a, in a bad place and in shock. How that rubbing alcohol just gives them a nice cooling effect without the, head, the shock of cold water. It works. In 1,200 months, you know, not many good things happen in the trees. <laughs> is she on again? Yeah. All right, she is. We got to go get it. See if we can get a good shot here. Go ahead, Sai. Go ahead, buddy. Get him up. Get him up, buddy. Come on. Coming out. There we go. So we only have a two shooter shoot at a time. So uh, Steve and I shot first. Now we're gonna let uh, Bo and uh, Trey go. Dogs on point up here. Two at a time just for safety reasons. A lot of these quail are flying low and uh, trying not to take too many low shots. Let's say out in front of the dogs. You gotta watch what's behind you every time you shoot. Safety's number one. Right, Booga? Here shot, good. Here he comes. Good. Way to Good. shoot, way to oh, shoot. Running. They flanked off to the side of me and just turned around and shot him. Easy as that. Good shooting, Trey. Male hey. bob white. Pepper here. Coming out. Get, there you go. Yeah. Way to shoot, boy. Good shot, Gun on safe. Gun on safe. That's a boy. Good job, man. Around this there is my first here, quail Pete. ever, it and it's my first time quail hunting. Jack, it's really fun, and I'm enjoying it. Jack, straight ahead, to your right. Good, straight ahead. No bird! No! If they don't get a shot at the bird, let them go out there, run around a little bit. Gives us another shot at the bird later on with the dogs. While we follow the dogs, we're gonna to go to a commercial break. All right, folks, we're gonna boil some crabs, but before we cook them, we gotta catch them. This is how we do it down on the bayou. So Travis, explain how the, uh, the crab trap works. All right, what you do is you put your bait in, this bottom cage right here. You always go put your trap with the bait on the bottom. And you got these four funnels on each side that allow the crabs to go in. They eat on the bait, and once they fill up, the natural instinct is to swim up and get away. They get in this top layer of the crab cage, and once they get in here, then they can't get back out to the funnels to go out. And you have these rings on the outside of your trap. It's a, a, a call device that allows uh, the smaller crab, the crab that's not of size, to get out. Looks like it works, huh? Yeah. All right, right here what we have is a, a male freshwater blue crab, which you can tell by the long bottom piece right here. A female's got more of a triangle diamond shape, bigger where it holds the babies. But the reason why we're catching these big blue males here is in fresh water way up from the Gulf is after they go and breed in the summer months, the females stay out on the coastlines in the saltwater marsh where the salinity's right and have their babies. The males travel back up into our local freshwater bayous, intercoastal canal, just different areas where they can get away from the salt water. So they make the travel every year to go breed with the females in the salt water. And then in the late summer months, they come up in the freshwater area. Just a much better crab out here at freshwater. Well, folks, we just caught some nice crabs, freshwater crabs. It's a Sunday afternoon. That's what we do down here. Travis is going to tell us how to boil them. All right, the way I like to do it is we'll put everything in at the same time. We put the vegetables in. First thing I like, check bay. Put a whole bag of check bay. That's about a bush or a crab. And see, check bay is unlike a lot of other seasons. They don't have uh, salt in theirs. So I like to add about a half a box of salt. So you take the live crabs and we start putting them in. That way, whenever they're in the pot, they're breathing in all the seasoning. It's getting in their system. They're still alive. 
You know, a lot of times if you throw them in hot, scolding water and they're not a full crab, we call them a weak crab, they just don't have that much meat. Their legs and claws tend to pop off. But this way right here, once you start it, it shocks them and all the legs and claws stay on. So it makes for a much better presentation. But in, in Louisiana, everybody does it different. And you can see right now, they're swimming around in that seasoning. That means they're just breathing it in. We could go ahead and dump them all in now. All right, now we got all our seasoning, our vegetables, and we got the crabs in the pot. It's time to light it. We're gonna let it come to a good roaring ball. 18 minutes once they start balling and they're ready to go. Well, folks, we got about two more minutes left on the boil, so we're gonna go ahead and add, add the vegetables. We got corn, and all you gotta do, this corn's pre-cooked, so you just gotta get it in there, let it soak up a little juice. You put that in too early, it'll get hot. Add a little sausage in there. And we got the mushrooms. All right, why don't you crank that back up and let's get it back rolling for the last two minutes and we're good to go. Two more minutes of a roaring ball, we're good to eat, ready to eat. Let's close the lid up. All right, now that they ball for 18 minutes, we shut off the butane, open up the lid and we're gonna cool down the pot. That's to stop them from cooking. Yeah, we're just trying to slow that water temperature down and stop them from cooking. They already cooked long enough, now we need them to soak. All right, I need a uh, taste test to Miss Anna. You gonna show us how to uh, peel these crabs and see if they came out all right? I'll be happy to. First thing I'll do is take the legs, take them off, the crabs are still hot. Of course, we're gonna keep this pinching for later. Then we take this little flop out put my finger on the bottom, the body of the crab and on the shell and lift it open. Then I take these pruning shears and you just clip both sides really good. And then take a knife, slice it in half. Right down the middle. That's where I was always confused. I've never seen that. And then Dude. you lift the meat out. Taste. Mm -hmm. And there is no waste. By the time you finish, there is no waste. And enjoy. See, I used to do it that way too, but I would always get too close. I didn't know to cut it exactly in half. That's, in that's half. the key. On these freshwater crabs that are so soft and easy to peel, what you do is you break them right here at this joint. One little tiny crack. Best meat in the crab right there. Here, Lee. You want that claw? Show, show him that claw. Oh. Wow. Let's eat, guys. You can find this recipe and more at KeepOnCastingTV.com. For the past few years, we've been hunting on lease land. This year, we're excited to say that we're hunting on our own property. It makes it easy for us from the office right here where we are. We can be in the fields in five minutes and, uh, and quail hunt and do any of our upland hunt. Because it's so new to us, it's mostly pasture land because that's the way when we purchased it in July. We will be doing things with Louisiana Wild and Fisheries and with Quail Forever to actually start developing a better quail habitat. We're excited that on the property, um, the new property, we found wild birds, so that's been neat. Uh, so there is some resemblance of some habitat there, but mostly pasture with edge species and fence rows along the sides. The best vegetation for quail is bunch grasses, and bunch grasses can grow anywhere around uh, fence rows, but they can also grow in fields and pasture lands. Uh, I know that the, uh, a rancher or a farmer or cattle grower would really rather have some good pasture land, but they can provide a buffer to some of those areas where these bunch grasses will allow the baby quail to get in underneath and make their own little tunnels so that they, they can stay away from the raptors, okay, that will predate them. But the other thing is it provides habitat too against coyotes and foxes and all the other things, feral cats even now are becoming a nuisance for, for quail population. I 
I'm hunting two English setters, and uh, English setters are different than the dogs we hunted earlier. They, the guy was hunting a Brittany and a Spaniel. The Spaniel was a flushing dog. These are strictly pointing dogs. I hunted quail with my father. This is my father's shotgun. This is a shirt my father wore bird hunting. So quail hunting means a lot to me because it's just a tradition that I've done forever. And Bo and his son today, you know, they do this and they'll have this same tradition. Maybe one day when Bo Jr. is as old as I am, he can look back and say, man, we had a good time bird hunting. These quail will get down under that grass pretty good. And that one's tucked in there really good. We, we knew what she was looking at, but we had to get in there and really flush it out. But uh, the boys made a good shot on it. Got some shooters up there now. Finally. Careful. Shoot him. There you go. Good shot, guys. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Let's walk forward. It's a great place to come up here, have a little family time, bring your kids up here, shoot some quail. As always, we want to thank our troops. Without y'all, we couldn't do what we're doing today. Until next time, keep on casting. So Boudreau and Thibodeau, they've been friends a long time and live next door to each other. Thibodeau's working in his yard. Boudreau comes flying out the house, runs to the mailbox, slams the mailbox and runs back inside. Tib just keeps on working. Comes out a second time, goes to the mailbox, slams it, goes back inside. Thibodeau's a little confused, so sure enough, Boudreau comes out his house again, goes to the mailbox, looks angry and slams it, and Tib's got to stop him. He says, Boo, what's the matter? He says, Tib, he says, I'm sitting at my computer doing some work. He said, that stupid thing keeps saying, you got mail. Avec les filles, oui, c'est juste pour m'amuser.